this session, basically, I'm just going to carry you through a research paper that was done for my master's program in TVET. So the, my project advisor or research advisor was um, Professor Harlan Morris. And uh, you may go ahead. So before we start, I just want to show you the layout of this presentation. So I want to start with the definition of the key terms, just a brief introduction, the statement of the problem, and we're going to look at the research questions along with an ov uh, overview of the findings with regards to the literature, the research design and methodology that I actually use, some of the study findings in terms of data presentation and the interpretation along with the conclusion, the recommendation, and the references. So just to start off with the key terms. Now for you to go further, it's best if you understand the terminologies that we adopt and where they're from. So the first one is ICT, and this is what was taken from UNESCO it basically tells you that it deals with a wide range of technological tools and materials that really transmit, save, and produce, and share, and exchange data. The next one is what is considered to be ICT competencies. Now, the defin this term here is from um, IGI Global. It says that you should have sufficient knowledge about technology and teaching to be able to design the appropriate um, technology-based materials that can be used in the teaching learning process. The final term is what is considered to be a TVET program. So what is considered to be a TVET program here, they are packaged and based on um, occupational standards and they are, they are basically delivered throughout the TVET framework in Jamaica and they lead to the, qual the qualifications under the National Qualification Framework are the CQF, which is the Caribbean or the CARICOM Qualification Framework. So that is what is considered to be a TVET program. So it's comprised of standards into various clusters. All right, so with regards to the overview of the study, it's really to look at the the extent to which um, ICTs are used throughout the formal TVET system in Jamaica. Now, the framework adopted here is from the UNESCO um, ICT framework for teachers. So we actually, it does actually describe how the competencies are grouped and classified, and we will look at that further down, and how they should be integrated from a wider perspective. Now, the problem that arises for this research, or why it was conducted, is that there is no, well, there's a lack of standardization of ICT within the execution of TVET programs based on the nature of programs and the facilities or the um, institution approved basically conduct training for those um, programs. So it is not standardized to a great extent and the problem that gave additional basis to this research was that it was con conducted during COVID time. I mean, that's almost the midst of COVID. So there was no set policy um, in place as to how to go about to use ICT within the delivery of the TVET framework. Next slide. All right, so the questions that guided the research or posed the rationale for the research is, one, we wanted to find out what are the, the different stages of um, these ICT competencies among these instructors delivering the TVET program. And the second one was that we wanted to know what stage these instructors are in terms of their competencies and how they were basically I'm um, integrating these competencies within the delivery of the programs. And we wanted to know if there's a difference in the whole integration based on gender, um, age, and teaching experience, and so forth, and qualification. And finally, the correlation between the competencies that the, the instructors possess and how they actually did the whole integration. So those were the guided questions. 
Now, the literature, as I said, it's based on a couple of frameworks, one being the UNESCO um, ICT teacher framework, that's the ICT um, CFT, and the other model that was adopted was the TAM, which is the Technology Acceptance Model. So what the TAM does is to look at the customer, the attitude based on the system theory that describes how the, co the, co um, the consumers basically they embrace the usage of the technology. Now the framework here looked at basically how you categorize the competencies that the teachers should possess. So these these competencies were um, they adopted by the original from the original UNESCO um, ICT competencies for teachers. So it was adopted for this particular research. So the framework consists of our own um, 18 competencies structure according to six characteristics of teacher professional practice. And these are well defined within the literature that was looked at. All right, so in terms of the research design and the methodology, the study utilized a quantitative approach using a um, experimental design where we actually wanted to find out a descriptive, correlative kind of um, the approach relating to the variables associated with the, the, um, the instructor's competencies. Now, we wanted also to find out the extent of the whole integration with regards to the delivery. So what we utilized was a simple survey that was developed and piloted first to get that correct um, validity and the reliability for use. And then we utilized the convenient sampling method because that was the most appropriate at the time based on the geographical span of these institutions. All right, so the participants that took place in this, this study were all from the formal um, TVET system. That means they were within heart trust system alone. And the survey basically was done in just English. That's the language here. And it's structured into three sections, section A, B, and C. And the, the whole instrument was piloted just to get it to a degree of standardization to administer to the sample. All right, so in terms of the method of the data co collection, each questionnaire, they were given some idea and the data clean, and they were uh, um, entered into to Excel. And from that, we further clean the data, and then we use the statistical um, packages for social sciences to actually do the analysis of the data. And the version that was used was version 25. And how we administered these, these instruments, well, it was two-folded. One, we physically visited the site and get some feedback regarding. And we also sent out mails to ask permission. And once we got the acceptance, then we actually proceeded. So some of the hindrance to this study, one was the pandemic that we had to change the design to accommodate the different modes or modality based on how the, the whole institutions were um, the operating at the time. And hence, what that resulted in was a low response rate. And it also reduces the sample size, which overall affected the methodology. However, based on the finding, we hope that the sample that we actually utilize still represents the population, but these are some key findings. Now, if you look at the programs that were looked at for this research, it shows you that at the two, we have the most respondents there, and as you go further up the chart in terms of the trees, which is equivalent to a diploma and the four, equi equi equivalent to an associate, and so forth, there was not many programs going up that line. So it's like it's a descending um, chart. Now, if you look at the gender, which was pretty surprising, <laughs> there was more female within the survey sample than males, which um, kind of goes against the notion, but that is what the research um, discovered, basically. Next slide. 
Now, with regards to the age, this was pretty um, interesting. The majority of the, the instructed survey fall within the 31 to 40 years bracket, which is pretty much good. It shows that um, the workforce is very prime. <laughs> Next slide. Now, what it also shows that the teaching experience of those persons that were surveyed, or most of them were over nine year, years and over, so teaching experience was not really a great um, factor. Now, in terms of the industry experience, they had most of what was surveyed, they had over four years experience. So that is also sufficient for the, re the research. Now, as we move into the qualification um, status of these instructors, we find out that most participants, to a great extent, had first degree, and it shows that 10% uh, and so forth, they had second degrees, which is pretty much fair. Go ahead. All right, with regards to certification, now, this graph here shows the certification for the the sample size and it shows that majority of the the um, the instructor had some intermediate um, ICT certificate. Now these are different from their core qualification in terms of their specialization. So this is just um, the additional certification within ICT. Now with regards to the structure of the questionnaire the instructors were asked to respond, see on a scale of one to five, meaning one, being unskillful, two, skillful, three, moderately skillful, and four, proficient, and five, being an expert, using a series of 16 questions. And now the analysis basically showed that the, the instructors were overall competent in terms of their competency status because the mean score was 4.5 here. So that justifies some logic with regards based on the previous um, graph shown. Next slide. All right, so the second question that was, what are the instructor stages of MICT delivery? Um, integration of the whole um, ICT within their specified program. So it was based on their program. Since each instructor or set of instructor would have been delivering different program. So to respond to this question, the scale was still what, one to five. However, one bas basically represented that they never at all does do any form of that integration. And two mean they seldom they do it, three sometimes, four, four is often, and then five is always. That means they always do it. So that was a series of 20 questions. Now what this shows is that they are basically competent to a moderate extent in terms of how they do the whole integration within their programs. That, from, that is measured from the competency framework. And then the next question we have, we, we, we actually looked at here was the difference in the, the instructor's stages to actually do the whole integration be, based on their age and their gender and their teaching experience along with their, their industry um, experience and so forth. And what we found out here using these tests is that it was basically normal to a great extent in terms of what what the tests actually showed. So that was a call to look into, into the whole the analysis for, further on. Plus the final question here is the correlation between these, in, these instructors' competency along with the whole integration. And this is where the research showed that even though the the instructors were competent to a certain degree. They weren't really doing the whole integration within that particular competency framework. So that is one of the findings of this research. So it was pre pretty low here based on the tests that was conducted, the, cor the, cor the correlation tests. 
So the conclusion here, which I've just stated, is that the, the instructors are overall competent to a great extent with their, um, I, the whole ICT framework, but in terms of the, the integration of these competency within the delivery of their specific programs, they are not competent to a great extent. And therefore, I had some, reco some, reco some recommendation based on these findings. One, there are more, but these are the, ma the major ones, is the development along with the whole implementation of ICT, the occupational standard for instructors. So that was a recommendation there. That is also from the UNESCO adoption strategy also. And the next one is to license these instructors based on their ICT competency. And the next one is to review these training programs for these instructors that would have been carried out by various colleges and universities. And then the next one is related to facility standards, where we need some audit or frequent, um, the art, frequent frequent um, the audit regarding the overall um, ICT setup for these programs, meaning that if the program is to be conducted by a particular facility, it needs to be audited against the standard to make sure that the resources are there, basically. All right, so these are some of my references, and I want to thank you for being here.